politics. You're either sick of me or in love in love with me. Probably a mix of both. But uh, I'm back for a little bit. Uh, I'm with an attorney uh, who's been on the ground here in East Chicago trying to help uh, the residents of West Calumet Complex. West Calumet Complex uh, was the original complex here that was being uh, forced, had a forced eviction uh, in the summer because they found 218 times the allowable lead, lim le lead level limit uh, in the soil. Um, so 218 times the allowable limit, which if you ask me is zero, um, and it was all low-income uh, African-Americans in that complex. Uh, and frankly, the EPA and the city knew about high levels for many, many years. They just tested it comprehensively this year. Um, they also originally did not test for the water in that complex. Uh, uh, EPA official told me uh, in August that this was not a water issue in East Chicago, Indiana. Uh, he said it's not like Flint. Uh, and then in December, it was revealed that they, they started finding uh, lead in the water, in uh, both in residential homes and this apartment complex. So either the EPA was hiding something or grossly negligent because they were not testing water at that time. And now they have found uh, water, uh, lead in the water. Another aspect I covered last night, if you watch the video on youtube.com slash TYT politics, they have told citizens currently that you are free to shower and bathe in the water, but they're not testing the home water heaters. Hot water in your shower is connected to the home water heater. Well, I did a little test of my own and you could see what color came out. We sent that to a private lab and we should have the results next week. But if they're not testing the water heaters uh, and I find things that the EPA didn't find, well, they got a lot of explaining to do, both here and in Flint, Michigan, because District 5, covers East Chicago, Indiana. It also covers Flint, Michigan, where they are also not testing the home heat, the uh, home water heaters. So uh, I'm back with you. And we were talking before I had to go because selfishly I actually wanted to take a pause to watch the Young Turks do a segment on this. Um, but essentially 50% of this complex is out. Uh, they've been, you know, you were saying, it. It's been improved, uh, the communication with them, the assistance, both financial, um, you know, uh, telling them of the risks wherever else they are moving environmentally, um, getting their, getting their um, housing vouchers, all that. It's definitely improved, but there's still people struggling to get to yeah. have to move. Yeah, so about half of the complex is, is still there and they're still searching for a, another place to go with their vouchers. Um, and a large number of the people that are left are seniors who have lived there for a long time um, or residents that have disabilities that make it more difficult for them to find accessible housing, uh, a place that's suitable for, for them and for their children uh, to, to live. Um, and so while there is a, um, a better system in place than there was back in August when people were originally given their, their vouchers, um, there's still a lot of struggles for the residents. Um, and, you know, just imagine the, the mindset um, and the, the trauma that goes into, you know, finding out that the, the soil that your house is on top of and the soil where your kids are running around playing every day um, is, is poisoning everyone. And then, you know, finding hurdle after hurdle um, when you're trying to find a new place to go. Um, it's really debilitating for a lot of people. Um, so, so residents, you know, they have their voucher, um, but they might encounter discrimination from a landlord that doesn't want to accept a voucher. Um, in the state of Indiana, uh, they're not actually required to accept Section 8 vouchers um, in, in the private market. So a, a landlord can say, I don't want to rent to you because I don't want to deal with the, the Section 8 voucher process. Um, in, other, in other states, for example, in, in Illinois, um, and in Chicago and Cook County specifically, um, it's illegal to discriminate against somebody because they have a Section 8 voucher. You can't say, I don't want to rent to you because of this. Um, unfortunately, in Northwest Indiana, it's allowed. Um, so residents can encounter uh, discrimination because they're trying to use a voucher somewhere. And that's a, a big hurdle that um, the residents are encountering. Um, and Where are the exceptions in the law for victims of environmental whatever you want to call it negligence uh, yeah negligence where are, where are the exceptions in the law because it doesn't seem like in situations like this where 
who the hell knows how long they've been contaminated, that they should be uh, held to the same standard yeah. for Section 8 vouchers and all these things. So, so there's a little bit more protection in this type of situation. Um, residents are getting a security deposit. For example, um, in general, when somebody has a Section 8 voucher, they have to come up with a security deposit themselves. They have to figure out how they're going to pay for a moving truck themselves. Um, and it's a really, it can be a really expensive process for somebody on a fixed income uh, to be able to, to up and move. So there is, you know, a little bit more of a protection, um, but in terms of moving somebody into, you know, the vast private market of housing, of rental housing, um, saying, you know, go find somebody that, that will accept you. Um, there's, there's just less regulation about, um, about that. You know, of course, you still can't discriminate against somebody because they're African American or Latino. Almost all of these residents are African American or Latino. So there you know, is potential discrimination there. Um, but in terms of the, you know, not wanting to go through the voucher process itself, unfortunately, there's, there's just not rules about it. And also, as as all these as all these lead crises, contamination, bacterias, who knows what we're going to find? It's not just lead. Mm -hmm. There's copper and chloroform and all, things I can't pronounce. There's arsenic. It? Arsenic. Yeah. Uh, there's Legionnaires mm -hmm. uh, in the uh, Flint University of Michigan Flint campus has Legionnaires. The uh, the college was nice enough to bury it in an email. Uh, I think on like a holiday week or something like that. I have the students didn't even know. It's you know what what is the what is the protections or who is hold, held accountable in all these places? Because is it the corporations that are contaminating the, the water sources that are then contaminating the pipes? That is it is it the city officials who aren't you know in, when it's their jurisdiction aren't doing the proper testing? I know this. I know you practice in Chicago, but it's a broader question, mm -hmm. like. Do, when, when stuff like this happens, does anyone get held accountable? In, in Flint, they, they charged emergency managers. Well, Rick Snyder's sitting pretty in Ann Arbor. Here, Mike Pence hasn't even come to this area, and he's about to be vice president. Uh, it just seems like, you know, I, I'm very big on injustice, and it, there's a lot of injustice here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there absolutely is a lot of injustice here. Um, uh, isn't it called the justice system? Of course. Yeah, it's a, it's a great irony. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there are mechanisms to hold people accountable for, for things, but unfortunately, a lot of the time, we will task a, a government agency with holding a corporation accountable for the cleanup. Um, that's what's happening here, right? Um, the EPA is, is forcing um, some corporations to pay for the cleanup of, of the Superfund site. Um, and, you know, there's, there's shortcomings with the way that we are doing things. Um, and then, of course, you know, local officials can be held liable, you know, from a personal injury perspective or also potentially, you know, on a criminal perspective, um, could be liable for, for a whole bunch of different things. You know, every situation is different. The facts are always different. Um, but, you know, when there's a great injustice like this, um, you know, people need to, to, um, to change their ways and make sure that um, the harm isn't replicated. Um, and that it doesn't happen anywhere else. Last question. Uh, I'm not trying to, you know, get your political views, but we have to be honest that we have an incoming president. He appointed a secretary of state from ExxonMobil, one of the biggest polluters, no demand. He appointed a EPA chief who doesn't believe in climate change. Um, he's appointing people who want to privatize just about everything. And we know Flint was in many ways, I think a privatization scam, which I've done videos on, by the way, uh, you could check out uh, the, the links between efforts to privatize water and what happened. Um, so I think that forgetting the legal ramifications, mm -hmm. uh, if things are bad now, there's potential for worse. I hate to tell you, but I got to tell you the truth. Um, what do you what do you think in terms of, you know, the EPA, uh, you know, just environmental uh, holding corporations accountable because I think a lot of my viewers always want to know what can I do like their viewers but they also a lot of them want to stand in rock a lot of them have, are part of Black Lives Matter a lot of them uh, you know protested at the DNC what sure. can people do I know you're not an activist but 
it just seems like if it's bad now, these people coming in aren't particularly uh, known to be interested in um, you know, conservation or protecting the wildlife or the environment mm -hmm. or black people or minorities. Yeah, well, so we also, the incoming, potentially the nominated secretary of HUD is Ben Carson. Oh, I uh, forgot about that. So, um, oh, my Lord. But, you know, if I'm going to try and be positive, because I think, you know, a lot, we, a lot of the time this is what happens, right? Um, we just kind of want to wallow in, in self-pity and, you know, in the world around us. Um, but, you know, Ben Carson... He's a neurosurgeon, so he should understand what lead poisoning does to somebody. Um, he should understand, you know, the long-term health consequences resulting from, you know, what lead does to a young child's brain. Um, so I hope that this is an issue that he's going to take seriously. Um, we've also heard from the incoming administration that, you know, infrastructure is going to be a big piece of, of, what, um, of what he wants to do. Um, so I hope that, you know, that lead poisoning prevention and abatement and, you know, fixing of lead pipes and remediating soil um, and, uh, and lead paint is going to be part of all of that. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to be, you know, really skeptical about, about what could happen. But, you know, I really hope that, um, that everybody is, is out in the streets and out, you know, contacting representatives and doing everything that they can to ensure that, you know, the issues in East Chicago, the issues in Flint are not forgotten um, and that we don't uh, just kind of stop um, because of, of things that, that we fear with the incoming administration. You know, this is a really important time for us to, you know, to mobilize and to, to work together to ensure that, you know, these injustices are, are remedied and that, that, you know, another generation of children is not poisoned. Thank you. I yeah. appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And uh, two things. One, I think what's really important about this story, because a lot of people will see like East Chicago, Indiana in the headline and be like, oh, who gives a fuck? Um, or a lot of people, you know, water to some people isn't the sexiest topic. Like what did Trump tweet this last hour is, is more juicy. Um, but I think why it's important is I think Standing Rock taught you uh, water is life. If you think it's corny, try going without water. Um, and it's not just the water, it's, it's uh, the effects of the contamination all around. Um, we live in a country that has a lot of complicated structures that have not been updated in decades. Um, that's part of why other countries across the world are, st are uh, out innovating us because they are investing in, in their infrastructure, but because of a lot of policies that I talk about all the time, the social Darwinism of, of Republicans, the total corporate bankruptcy of Democrats, or the, the moral bankruptcy of Democrat, Democrats. I could go on. Uh, I'm not as up, uplifting as you. Um, but it's important because, you know what? This could come to your community next. Just because you might not be black or Latino, you might be wealthier. Like, you know, it's not coming to you if you live on the Upper West, west Side of New York City. I'll, I'll be fair. But... <laughs> All it takes, it, you know, first it starts in black communities, Latino communities, formerly middle class communities. I interviewed a guy the other day who used to be middle class, like the, the heart of Flint. Uh, Detroit used to be ground zero for the middle class. They're having water problems. Pittsburgh, I, I just was told, is having giant water problems. Florida, you don't think of Florida as the slums. They ha are having lots of water problems. I mean, it's going around and around and around. And guess who's investing in water? Guess who's making a lot of investments in water right now? Big banks, hedge fund guys. You wanna know why? Because there might be a shortage. A lot of people, and I'm not a conspiracy theorist, think World War III will be over water. I mean, World War III might be over a tweet with Trump, but it could be over water. So if water is not, if the topic is not sexy to you, I promise you, you won't be having any sex when you're dead. Uplifting as always, wait, wait, wait. Um, uplifting as always. I want you to do me a favor. How many people are watching right now? 62. Okay, not a lot. Uh, I'm going uh, two minutes down the road and uh, I'm going to a home that I visited in uh, August. If you look at the video of this home, you will see that uh, what was under her shower was 
What, what would you describe that as? Just total contamination, fungi? Direct access to the dirt and the lead. Direct access to the dirt and the lead right under her shower. Um, so we're gonna go back and see if things have improved. Take a, take a guess. She is living in this complex I've been talking about. So I know it's Friday night, not primetime viewership, but I'm gonna put it on Facebook anyway because I wanna get, keep getting people to share this and get the word out. Uh, this is very important and uh, I believe, I truly believe, you know, when I was in Standing Rock originally in September, uh, frankly, nobody was watching my videos, maybe a couple thousand. Uh, you know, I would do Facebook Lives like this, not, 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 not great response, but if the story is there and you're on the right side of the story, like eventually people sharing and getting angry and understanding how it affects them, this is gonna get a lot bigger, folks, trust me. And uh, hopefully you'll be there along the way. So please share this video and I'll see you across the street in a little bit.